Today, you are going to hear the best speech ever. Then, you will meet your secret admirer on an online dating site and discover that they are your perfect match. Next, you'll get a call from your dream job with an insanely high salary and live out the rest of your days in luxury and happiness. And of course, the bank had an error and $1 million will be deposited into your account by the end of the day. You may be wondering how I know all this. Well, it's obviously because of your horoscope. You are a Taurus and the stars are aligned at the degree of fate in the perfect arrangement for your favor. Sounds awesome, right? Well, what if I also mentioned that your horoscope told you to rob a bank tomorrow, to leave your family and flee the country? Would you still like the horoscope? For some people, it doesn't matter which one it was. They'll either get on that online dating site or start Googling blueprints for the bank. At first glance, the concept of horoscopes and fate sounds pretty cool. Imagine walking onto a street and seeing an, albeit slightly shady, person telling you, I can predict your future. With something like a horoscope, which tells you the future of your entire life, there is obviously a large appeal. Now, this all may seem obvious, but right now, horoscopes are more appealing than ever because in terrible times, we seek something, anything, to tell us where we're headed and that good times are near. So today, we must examine why, despite scientific advancement, horoscopes still manage to blow our minds. We'll begin by understanding the correlation between horoscopes and times of uncertainty then how a fascinating mental bias called the Forer effect makes us believe in them, and then explain how horoscopes use the potentially dangerous concept of fatalism. So right now, we're clearly in a struggle against COVID. I mean, we're even giving these speeches on video instead of in person. Well, horoscope apps are reaping the benefits. Since April of 2020, Apps like AstroTalk increase users by 10% almost every month. Revenue on astrology platforms has increased by huge amounts, jumping by 35 to 40%. And this drastic inclination for horoscope usage has happened just after COVID started. Coincidence? I think not. Astrology has appealed to many people, like Francesca Lisette, who spent a decade researching this subject. In a situation where she began to suffer from life-threatening pain, she began to involve herself with horoscopes. And she hoped that sites like Cafe Astrology would tell her that her pain would eventually go away. Rupesh Sharma, a creator of the Astro Buddy app, has noted that suddenly, astrology business is booming. Why? Because people are facing so much uncertainty in their futures, especially due to COVID. And so they turn to the stars for answers. And we can all do this, even for the trivialest of reasons. Hey Mars, could you let me know how I did on my math test yesterday? Hello? Mars, you there? No response. And even if the sun responded, the sun, there is no sun in Seattle. Well, if it did, horoscopes are based off of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Well, their advice can be so generic. Let's look at some examples of horoscopes. Co-star, your day at a glance. Start a cult. Wow, I was going to take this as a joke before I realized I already joined a cult. I entered speech and debate. Anyway, here are some other examples. Almost all of these horoscopes are quite general. And that's where the Forer effect, also named the Barnum effect, comes into play. The Forer effect essentially says that people believe things that are incredibly generic, and they believe that that thing is specific and special to just them. The effect was then observed when Forer gave a class of students a personality test. Every student got a paragraph of extremely generalized feedback with very vague character descriptions. Here's a copy. It told them that they tended to be critical of themselves and have a great need for people to like and admire them. In the end, 
They rated how accurate they thought this was on a scale of 1 to 5, with 5 being the most accurate. The average rating was a 4.26. That's insanely high. So now we're left with two different conclusions. One, wow, they discovered the human cloning in the 1940s and all the students are identical. It's Dolly the Sheep part two. Or two, you know, they were experiencing the Forer effect. So we apply generic feedback to our life all the time. It would be like telling a crush, I wear socks. OMG, do you wear socks too? We are so alike. This match must be meant to be. Such a generic statement, wearing socks, and yet to the two people in the conversation, it is something that connects them and only them. And that's what people do. They look to horoscopes and they personally identify with them. Still, many people follow horoscopes and their own fate obsessively and happily. But these things about uncertainty and psychological effects, they matter because people listen to horoscopes. Horoscopes are gaining power over people. They're, they're controlling our actions. Is life the matrix? Well, last time I checked, it isn't. But people do naturally gravitate towards horoscopes and fate for explanations of why things are happening or things are going wrong. And it's incredibly prevalent with COVID increasing our likelihood of delving deep into the realm of horoscopes. So horoscopes change our decision-making processes. To see the effects of horoscopes such as these on our actions, John Hopkins University and the University of South Carolina ran a study on students in 2013. They both gave people a horoscope, dictating how their day would be, and then asked them to pick between going to a party and cleaning their house. In general, they found that people with horoscopes that encourage letting loose and saying yes as these show ended up going to the party, whereas people who didn't believe as much in horoscopes or got pessimistic horoscopes stayed to tidy up their house. Well, something good came out of these experiments at least. The dorms were probably the cleanest they'd been all year. But now, People are getting their decisions from horoscopes, and that's what's happening. It doesn't matter if astrology is real or not. What matters is its effect on people. And not only do horoscopes change what we do, they can also lead to a fatalistic attitude, something incredibly fatal. Puns aside, <laughs> fatalism, put in Calvin's words from Calvin and Hobbes, is saying that if anything bad happens, it's not our fault. It's fate. Some of the time, it can be good, like with Francesca Lisette, the person who turned to horoscopes to comfort herself. But not all the time. In 1991, a researcher named Olmsted found fatalism caused increased substance abuse problems, depression, and to feeling that nothing will get better, because what is happening now is what is meant to happen. And athletes, when faced with the possibility of defeat, end up just throwing in the towel in as an admission of losing to some overarching will. When people die of COVID, for example, because they don't wear a mask, or don't follow safety guidelines, etc., it can easily be justified as their death was going to happen anyway. The fatalism we see in horoscopes can see that there is no need for progress because everything is predetermined. In fact, genocides of entire groups of people could be justified through fatalism and horoscopes. And that is why, day after day, newspapers publish horoscopes and people tear through them, because they provide blind faith, justification, and a clear dictation of events. So people turn to horoscopes when things go awry, and this changes how we act and how we live, which is why this matters so much. Especially now, in a time of uncertainty, we all want to feel just a little starstruck. So today, as predicted, you heard the best speech ever. Actually, I'm kidding. I mean, I'm not arrogant. After all, I'm a Libra.